Hello, welcome back to the geography class. Today we're going to see water cycle or hydrological cycle. The hydrological cycle has four main components. It has input and which is precipitation. It has storages. We include interception, surface storage, soil moisture storage, groundwater storage, river channel storage, and the vegetation. It has transfers or flows uh, where we include the lift drip or we also call it through fall, stem flow, surface runoff, infiltration, through flow, percolation, groundwater flow, which is also called base flow, and the channel flow. Then it has outputs, which include evaporation, transpiration, and river discharge. So what you see is precipitation, and in this situation it is rainfall, because it is liquid, as you see there are some drops falling, falling off, and if you come close to the vegetation here, so that is wind shaking, you can see that uh, some drops are falling there, so these drops that are falling on this vegetation are representing interception. So the drops which fall on vegetation on the leaves, see like these ones, are what we call interception and then they are stored here as a interception. So interception refers to the precipitation which is uh, blocked by vegetation before it reaches to the ground. So it first falls on the leaves before it goes to the ground. That's what you call interception. I can take precipitation and I can take interception. So as you see again, some water are flowing along this stem of uh, the vegetation as you see here it is flowing towards the, the surface that is stem flow and uh, some uh, also drops after intercepted after being intercepted here they fall off the leaf to the surface that's what you call leaf drip or through fall you can see them. So I can take leaf drip or through flow where the drops were falling off the leaf and the stem flow where water was flowing along the stem of the plant. Now down here on the surface you can see that water is flowing down slope so that's what you call surface runoff it is also called overland flow um again as you see some drops are falling from the sky down to the surface immediately that's precipitation but again as you observe these leaves of uh, the beans are releasing some water that they have intercepted as a through fall, which is also called the lift drip. But on the surface, water is not flowing. There is no surface runoff. What does it, does it mean? It means that water is infiltrating this soil. So if I can try to open up, you will see that soil inside is wet. So this process of having water Rainwater passing through the soil downwards is what we call infiltration. So it, it makes the soil here wet. So this wet soil constitutes a storage called soil moisture. 
So soil moisture is a storage in the soil here where the soil becomes wet and it happens because water has infiltrated. So it is supplied by infiltration. Again, after infiltration, that is downward movement of water from the surface inside the soil. Water in here is able to move towards the side. So as you see, this drop that is falling here, here, when it reaches in the soil, it doesn't only wet the depth below it, it also is able to move sideways. So like towards these sides. Eh? That's why you see the soil here is all wet. So this movement of uh, water sideways after infiltration in the soil moisture is what we call through flow. You remember through fall is this leaf drip or this water that is after in interception falls on the surface. This is what you see. Then through flow is after infiltration soil moisture moves sideways. I'm meaning in the soil. So we have seen surface runoff. So it increases when the infiltration is low. Then we have seen infiltration. Remember surface runoff is the movement of water on the surface downslope. Then infiltration, uh, it is movement of water from the surface deep down in the soil. And it goes with the, uh, it increases with the permeability and the porosity of the soil. When the permeability or porosity is high, infiltration is high. Then infiltration supplies soil moisture, which is a store in the soil, making the soil moist or making it wet. And that moisture in the soil can move sideways, which is through flow and through flow is different from um, through fall or leaf dip in a sense that the leaf drip is from a leaf to the surface while through flow is the soil moisture that moves sideways not downwards so if i can show you again on this diagram in your examination you sometimes are asked to draw and label hydrological cycle. We draw the vegetation, we draw precipitation. This is a cloud here. And this I call the A is precipitation, the drops that were falling off in the sky. Those drops you see. Then uh, the plant here in the green. And these uh, blue uh, bullets are intercepted drops as those are that are on this leaf. Then um, this C is through fall. Y is a stem flow. B is interception, as I said. Then um, this movement here that I called D is surface runoff that I shown you there. And the uh, P here, these arrows from the surface down these are infiltration then the horizontal arrow that i called q is a through flow then r is a storage called soil moisture um, some components that i'm unable to see now are s which is percolation water that was stored in soil moisture keeps on moving down very deep where water accumulates in the groundwater so t here is the groundwater then 
the upper limit of ground water is what we call water table. Water table, it is a line that marks the upper limit of ground water. So, after ground water, this water very deep in the soil, it is able to move also sideways. I shown you this, that I called U. This U is called ground water flow, or it is called base flow. Then when it comes back to the surface, it makes a spring. So F here is a spring, the source of rivers. In other words, the whole of this, I called G, is a river. And it ends in an ocean. So this is a river mouth. So as you see in the road, because uh, infiltration is low, there is more surface runoff, and you see some rills here have been made by the running water by erosion. So you see drops of rain falling off and the uh, surface runoff. So as surface runoff takes place, it takes water from uh, high altitude to lower altitude. So it moves down towards uh, a, a bigger stream. So you see, this is a surface runoff, and this is a stream. Uh, the color is brown because of erosion, but this is a bigger stream that is receiving uh, surface runoff from uh, different uh, slopes. So as you see, some water are coming in. So this is channel storage and it is supplied by the spring and it is also supplied by surface runoff. So the higher the surface runoff, the more water is accumulated in the water channel and the river channel. And if it keeps on increasing, that's when floods come in. When uh, these banks, when these banks become short, so water will start flowing beyond the banks. Which, that's what you call flood. So when the slope is uh, zero, or when the, the surface is flat, or when there is a depression, rain water accumulates to form surface storage. So you see, this water is stored on the surface. It's not flowing, but it keeps on increasing as the rain water is dropping in. So this is what you call surface store. On my diagram here, you see this is the surface, this is a depression. So surface, uh, water that is falling in here cannot flow, it accumulates. What I labeled as E here is surface storage. So when it is full, water keeps on flowing. But this is a store of water on the surface because water is not moving. So as buildings increase, surface runoff increase because uh, surface are, con are made concrete or they are made less permeable. So as you see here, between these two buildings, uh, there is more surface runoff than when we were in open space. So as I told you, when the surface is flat, water doesn't flow, so it constitutes surface storage. But when uh, there is a slope, as you face here, the same place, but here is a slope, there is surface runoff. So as you see here, on this part of the tree, it is wet, but here some drops are falling off the leaves. Those are a uh, true fall or leaf drip, but some water have been flowing on the along the stem. See, it is so far here. Water is reaching here, flowing down from the top, and when it, if it keeps on raining, 
it will keep on flowing and make this trunk wet. So this is stem flow. This is stem flow. And these drops from the leaves are a leaf drip. So this surface runoff flows downstream, uh, down slope towards the main river. So it's down there where you see the bamboo between the two hills is a big river. As you observe, that's a valley which is flooded by this surface runoff before reaching to the river channel. And uh, as this surface runoff keeps on increasing in the river, it also will flood beyond the banks. Ham. See, here is surface runoff. Then, if you can see, this is the road. This is the road. And uh, to construct this road, they have cut off this slope. And now, on this side of the cliff of the road, you can see that this water is dirty because of erosion. Then here, you, you see water flowing, but it is clean, which means that it has been, uh, it has first infiltrated in the soil. It infiltrated in the soil first, then uh, constituted uh, uh, soil moisture, then after it moved sideways as through flow, reaching here to the cliff, it found it uh, open, so it came back to the surface. So this is an indicator of through flow. It first infiltrated up, up the hill, reaching in the soil. It moved sideways, but coming here to the cliff, it found that the cliff was, uh, that the soil has been cut, so it, it came out here as a spring. That's why you see it is flowing as if it is a spring but it doesn't last for a long a long time because when it, it stops raining it takes some days and it is over it is, becomes dry it is not a, a permanent river it is not a permanent uh, a water source but it can last for like two days or three days or a week then it dries so what you have seen there is here they constructed a road, they cut this part to make a road flat here. And when uh, through flow was happening, it came out here, and so it is flowing here. It is flowing out here as a spring, so you see comes out as a spring. So we have seen groundwater that it comes after percolation. Remember percolation comes after soil moisture. So soil moisture here and we call this as percolation. So I can take percolation and percolation supplies groundwater which is tea here. So I can take groundwater as storage and the um, groundwater flow, I say that the groundwater here can move sideways to produce rivers. So this is our you here, groundwater flow, it is also called base flow. We have seen channel flow in a small stream but we also are going to see it down there on a big river. So it is a channel flow, you have seen it. And um, channel storage, you have seen it. And the uh, vegetation, uh, plants, plants absorb water from uh, soil moisture. See the roots of plants grow in here. So they absorb water from the soil moisture and they contain them. That's when you cut a tree, you find it is wet. So water that is contained in the, in the vegetation makes a vegetation a storage. So I can take that vegetation storage is clear. 
in a sense that it contains water that it gets from uh, soil moisture by roots. So when there is sun, when there is a temperature, water on the surface, that this surface becomes dry. So where does the water go? It evaporates. The, that happens to oceans as well. It happens also to rivers or any water that is exposed to the temperature. So it causes evaporation to take place. And that's why uh, on this diagram, I shown uh, an ocean and I shown arrows that are going up as H. So this H is the uh, evaporation. And it is an output because it takes water away from the drainage basin. And the transpiration, it is when this vegetation releases water that was in the vegetation. It is not this water it, it, that has been intercepted. No, water that is contained in the vegetation. It is released by uh, the vegetation through the stomata. Stomata are the small pores that are in the leaves. So it goes away as water vapor. That's what you call transpiration. When you combine them, we call it evapotranspiration. I mean evapotranspiration is found in the atmosphere. When ev evaporation from uh, water combines with the transpiration from plants, so it becomes water vapor in the atmosphere, but from different sources, from evaporation and from transpiration to make evapotranspiration. As you see up there, uh, there are some water that have, have been uh, channeled in uh, this canal from uh, the slope towards down here, this is a road. If you see this is a bridge. Down here, it's not a waterfall, <laughs> but it is a waterfall. It is a waterfall, but it is, a, it is not a permanent, it is temporary when it, uh, rainfall has happened. Then when you observe, it is moving towards the, the, the river valley, that's where the main river is. So, because the, the valley is too flat, it caused flood before it reaches to the river. So this flood here is not caused by the river because if you observe very well, close to the bamboos there, the, the line of bamboos, there is no water, but close up here, close to the mountain, it is flooded. It means that this flooding has been not due to, to the river flooding, but due to uh, surface runoff from this slope. So again, surface runoff towards the river, but first flood in the floodplain here on this side. So as I told you, uh, the river, the main river here between the two slopes, you see this slope and uh, that slope is between these bamboos. You see the, there are bamboos here on uh, the left side, the left bank, and there are bamboos on the right bank. Here are bamboos. So all surface runoff were, were, that was taking place in this surface and uh, no, on this slope and uh, that slope it was accumulating water in this river. That's why you see it has uh, gone a bit high and it is almost to the bank full stage. See the banks here are almost full. If you rain water keeps on accumulating in here, then this river will go beyond the banks until it start flooding and that will be river flooding. So um, in uh, this drainage basin, it is uh, a storage of water as a river channel. As still it keeps on moving water from um, one place to another in the same drainage basin, it still acts as a flow. But uh, because uh, uh, it is flowing again uh, out of the drainage basin, it acts as a a river discharge so it takes it keeps on flowing out of the drainage basin um, 
So it, it acts as an output of the drained basin because it takes water away of the drained basin. Remember, a drained basin is a, an area that is drained by a river and its tributaries. So as it drains water from that area, it takes water to somewhere else. That's why it is called uh, an output. But it is also a, a storage because in, this, in the same drained basin, water is in that channel. And it is also called a flow because water is moving from one place to another and it's not stopping. Uh, on this diagram, remember a river is, uh, the source is F. So from here downwards, the whole of this is a river. But if we say that the, the drained basin we are considering is this, so the channel here, the whole of this is the channel, which is a storage. And the water is flowing from here to here. It is a flow. But again, water is moving from this drained basin to somewhere else. That's why it becomes an output. So this is the river discharge as output, as water is taken away from the drained basin to somewhere else. A quick recap. Input is the only one, precipitation. Storages can be uh, interception by plants, surface storage where the surface is flat, soil moisture after infiltration, groundwater after percolation, channel, uh, like in a river and the vegetation uh, as the plants have water that uh, they absorb by roots. Transfers include the lift drip or through fall from uh, the leaves to the surface and the um, stem flow after in, uh, in interception water flows along the stem of the, the tree or the plants Surface runoff, water flows on the surface from high altitude to lower altitudes. And the infiltration is when water is moving from surface to the soil vertically. Through flow is the horizontal movement of soil moisture. Percolation is the downward movement of soil moisture towards groundwater. Then the groundwater flow is the, or base flow, it is a when the groundwater moves sideways. Channel flow, it is uh, when water is moving in the river channel. Then the outputs are three. Evaporation, when the temperature increases and the water that is available, either on the surface or in the soil moisture or after interception, uh, evaporates, turns into vapor and uh, goes in the atmosphere. Then uh, transpiration, it's when water that is uh, held in plants uh, is released through stomata after, uh, by increase of uh, temperature, either by the sun or mainly by the sun. And river discharge, it's when water moves out of the drainage basin by flowing water. To conclude the, the cycle, um, Evaporation and the transpiration ascend in the atmosphere and the, the higher they go, the cooler they become or they cool adiabatically to form clouds and the clouds later will produce precipitation and the cycle will start. So I here stands for this process of evapotranspiration turning into water droplets in the atmosphere that you call cloud, so it is condensation. And after condensation, there will be precipitation. Okay. Thank you for watching. If you want more videos, subscribe.